Hello and welcome to the MHS Rewind studio on the campus of Martinsville High School for the third episode of Inside Martinsville Football. Today I'm here with head coach Brian Duggar. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing great, Maddox. How you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. So, big win over Bloomington South. Why don't you talk about that game a little bit? Well, I mean, it's always a, a big deal when you beat your rival, beat Bloomington South. Uh, obviously, a lot of history there between the two programs. But uh, uh, they're a really good football program. Uh, they're a great team. They're going to have a lot of success in 5A. And uh, anytime you get a good win like that against a good team, you'll take it, uh, especially all the adversity that we had to face, having to play a little on Friday, a little on Saturday, falling behind late with a dramatic win at the end. Uh, just an all-around uh, uh, great performance. Uh, really happy with our kids and how they responded this week uh, with the you know practicing in the mornings and having to not be able to go outside on Thursday and then again the, the delays on Friday finishing on Saturday just overall just a, a testament to you guys and and uh, how, uh, how 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 in tune you were with what we need to get done mm -hmm. and I thought we talked a little about about the offensive side of the ball to start here I know we had a bunch of really good drives and mm -hmm. some really good runs from Austin Pryor yeah, so the game kind of kind of went in waves with certain people, I felt like. You know, early on, it was a lot of A.J. runs, uh, just kind of the looks we were getting, that transition more to getting Hunter involved in the game with the passing game, a little bit of the run game. And then Saturday, it was more of Austin's kind of show outside of a couple big plays uh, uh, down the stretch to kind of set us up for that last touchdown. But uh, most of it was, was Austin Pryor on Saturday, and the old line just opened up holes for him and uh, kind of great drives to put him in the end zone and, and get us some scores. Mm -hmm. And we'll take a look at a few of those plays as we play the highlights presented by Carl Van Dievender. <laughs> Some of the looks they were giving us early, allowing us to get the ball out quick, out wide to Mason and Draven. Uh, but a lot of the stuff early, again, I felt like was, was getting A.J. going, running the ball, um, just some different things. This is a great effort here, getting in the end zone. Um, stuff of spin moves there and, 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 and fighting to get in. But uh, that, that's kind of what we felt early. The looks we were getting were, were more uh, A.J. base, and we just took advantage of it and, and did that. Uh, defensively, I, I thought we played well. You know, there's Reese Wolf and Levi Ruder coming down, making a big tackle. Um, you know, th I thought they had a great first quarter, and I thought our defense started to wear on them. I think 26 is a really good ball carry, first of all. Um, and uh, I thought we started to wear on them, and then the, the second quarter, I thought we really started to kind of show our dominance a little bit in the run game. Um, with plays like that, we had Noah Sumner and some other guys. Um, and then I, th I think the break allowed them to reset a little bit and kind of re get some guys fresh. And for Saturday, that kind of changed them a little bit and, and how they came out and attacked us. But uh, overall, I, I thought our defense was flying around. I um, thought they were doing a good job of, of, of causing havoc like always. You see three or four hats there flying around. Um, just, just good stuff there. Uh, Levi Ruder again with another great play, getting his hand in there, causing a fumble. Um, you know, they, they fall on it, but luckily, uh, you know, the next play we uh, were able to, to block a punt here. Joel Sumner, uh, just great job doing exactly as we, we executed and talked about it. Falling on the end zone, on the ball in the end zone for a touchdown. Uh, this is kind of a, a momentum swing here. The, 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 the tide really turned on this play, and I felt like our offense really opened up from that point on. They didn't take too many shots, but this is one of them. Uh, Reese Wolf does a great job. Wish he would have caught it, but uh, uh, other than that, though, he does a great job staying back. And then this was just kind of, you know, again, we kind of started opening up some stuff here. This is where the second quarter, the passing game kind of opens up. Get Draven the ball out wide there. Uh, coming back here, hitting, I think it's Dotson there. Um, and then I think we hit... Uh, that may be the next drive. Uh, but we just, you know, things started opening up there and we started making some 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 different things that we didn't didn't do in the first quarter. So the delay after the um, halftime was because of lightning. It was a 30 minute delay and it just kept lightning and it went on for about an hour and a half. And was that um, sort of like across the state and across the city? Yeah, and... great effort there by AJ as well. Uh, I thought he was in, but maybe not. And then Hunter gets the uh, gets the touchdown here. Yeah, the, the delay was statewide. Uh, a lot of throughout the state. A lot of people had to finish on Saturday or were just overall no contest because they couldn't get the game. Ready. But we're lucky. Blooming South's close, so um, they were able to get here. We'll get officials and finish it on Saturday. But, um, Again, just you see our defense flying around. This is where they really start to lock, lock up. Um, they, their run game really kind of slowed down. Um, I thought we did a great job getting penetration with our D-line there with like Dom. Uh, just, just overall a great job. And then this is this right here, maybe. This is up for play of the game for us. Trent Tolliver on fourth and one. 
great effort play, fighting back, and then that gave us 30 seconds here to get, go down and score, and uh, I thought we did a great job here, you know, get the ball to Hunter, get the ball to uh, someone else, um, you know, just kind of mix around, but then Hunter makes a great play right before the half. Uh, just to, to punch it in to go up 47 14. That's where the delay happens. And, um, you know, it's kind of a whole new game going into Saturday. So, uh, really had to shift gears, really had to regroup. They marched down on that first drive. Uh, and then we do the same thing right back with them, just a little slower pace uh, with a lot of Austin Pryor. And, and again, you see the holes opening up. They're massive, good kickouts. The helmet's going to pop off here in a second, I think. Uh, maybe not this one, but maybe the next one. Um, you know, just great blocking, great job. Uh, Josh Jones, I thought, I know we talk about our old line a lot, but I thought Josh Jones was, was phenomenal. He was, he was bobbleheading people, knocking helmets off. Just, I mean, he was, he had a great game in a lot of ways. Uh, you don't see it in the box score because he didn't have a catch, but uh, overall he was, he was a big difference maker for us. So I want to make sure we give Josh a, a shout out there. Um, along with obviously the five guys up front, which you guys did all game, but um, you know Josh is kind of that receiver tight end guy, so it's a little bit different for him. Then uh, again, I felt like our defense they were kind of up against it a little bit on Saturday, uh, just because you know, they got to reset, regroup a little bit, uh, kind of gave them a different uh, look as well. So we got to, we had to kind of play really well on offense, uh, which is fine. That's how it works. You know, offense defense have to complement each other. You got you have to have waves, ups and downs. Um, and our offense really stepped up and, and made plays when we needed to. Uh, this is the, the, the big play, right? You know, there's 44 seconds to go. We get the ball after they score, come down. Uh, and then after that, it's uh, Austin Pryor. It was one more play to Hunter Stroud there. Then Austin Pryor punches it in to give us the lead late. Uh, I think at this point, there's 10 seconds left or something like that. I think, uh, uh, you know, re really, really proud of our offense for scoring with 32 seconds and with 44 seconds before at the end of the half, uh, big deal. And then our defense coming out and closing it. Dewey with a sack here, uh, great, great play there. Good job doing his job. Uh, you know, he's kind of on, on, on quarterback uh, uh, spy, if you will. Um, and then just finishing it out in general. So overall, uh, really happy with the performance. Uh, Got to clean some things up, but when you beat a good team, sometimes they make plays as well. And uh, I'm, I'm really proud of our kids. Absolutely. So Greenwood mm -hmm. is up uh, this week, it's closing in. And uh, last year, this game, you know, wasn't really our best game at all. You know, a lot of people were down in the dumps after we lost. And um, a lot of people see this as a trap game. And a trap game is when, you know, we, we just came off a Bloomington South win. You know, it's definitely big. It's definitely going to keep our spirits high. And you could also look to, to the week after this one where we played Decatur. We beat Decatur, and that gave us, you know, kind of a conference championship there. So this game is sort of like you think about what happened before, and you think about what's going to happen, you sort of just forget about that. So how are the Artis going to not have a trap game this year? Well, I, um, <clears throat> I'll be honest. I don't think it's a trap game. I mean, this team came in here and kicked our butt last year. It's 43-28. to 28. Um, To me, that, that says it's in itself. It's not, it's not a trap game. They're, they're good enough to beat us. They're, they're, they're great. They, they do some really, really good things. I think they're really well coached. Um, uh, their running back, I think, is one of the top running backs in the conference. Uh, they've got a couple really great wide receivers. Uh, defensively, they've got some guys that fly around. I, th I think they're a really good football team. Um, you know, that being said, you know, you can say, you know, there's been a lot of talk about beating Bloomington South, the Decatur game next week. Like, it goes against everything we stand for. Everything we stand for is 1-0, and that's about playing within that week and going 1-0 at practice, 1-0 at the next game. And if, and if we don't have that mindset, it's not going to matter this week. It's not going to matter later in the season. And that's what our whole purpose is, is being all about in tuned and intentional about that week. So everything we've got this week isn't about Bloomington South. We don't get, we don't get extra points to go against Bloomington South or against Greenwood because we beat Bloomington South. We don't, we don't care about Decatur yet. It's, it's all about Greenwood. It's 1-0 against Greenwood. Um, I think we, we've got to have a great week of practice. We've got to do a, some really good things. And we've got to be prepared to play a really good football team. Absolutely. So uh, we talked about it in practice that this team is better than la than last year's team. Mm -hmm. How are they? How are they better? What's different? I, I mean, honestly, I just think they're they're good up front. They're solid on both sides. They're big. They're really big. Mm -hmm. I don't think they were as big as they were last year. Last year, I don't think they were as big. Uh, quarterback is, is solid. He's not as good as uh, the the Riddle kid from last year because he was really 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 impressive. Um, but I mean, he's 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 coming in. He's learning the offense, and I think he's gonna be really good. Um, he he's just kind of learning on the fly. Uh, you can tell there's some 
some things that they did last year that they're just not quite as cohesiveness this year. Um, and that's going to click. And just hopefully it doesn't click this week. Hopefully <laughs> it clicks later on down the road um, because he's got a great live arm. Uh, he's getting better with his reads. And uh, like I said, they've got two or three really nice weapons. Uh, and the Rupert kid, uh, he might be – I mean, he's up there with the Lugers kid as the top, one of the top running backs in our conference. So um, we're, we're going to have to play really well. We're going to have to play sound football. We're going to have to do our job on offense and defense, and we're going to have to beat a good football team at their place. Yep. And we know that uh, we've talked about it in practice. They like to blitz a lot or maybe like do some stunts up front. So what what's sort of like the plan heading into this heading into this week? It, it's the same as always. You know, it's knowing what your responsibility is and executing your job. You know, we, we the way we run our offense, the way we do things, we, we account for all that. We're prepared for all that. We throw a million different things at you guys at practice. Um, you know, we we want you know a lot of times people talk about playing fast and don't think and all that. We're we're kind of the opposite. We want we want to be we want to be thinkers up there. We want to be smart. We want to know what we're supposed to do and then play fast because we're so confident in that um, so we challenge you guys speci uh, specifically to be to be really in tune to what they're doing um, so uh, it's just doing our job that's it I mean it really is it's, it's it's trusting what you've been coached to do going through your process and doing your job all right coach so as Friday's approach as Friday's approaching last question here um, what are the keys to the game well, offensively, it's 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 going to be what it always is. We got to we got to be we got to identify their fronts. We got to do a great job up front of, of knowing what they're in and, and their blitzes and different stunts that they run. We got to take care of the football, um, and I also think that we've got to push the pace. We've got to really push it. Um, I think we've got to make them 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 line up and play us consistently um, with, with the way we want them to play. Uh, defensively, it's it's kind of again same thing. We need to we need to be a gap sound. We need to have gap integrity. We need to fly around, cause some turnovers, and we can't give up big plays. That sounds good. So, that is going to do it for the third episode of Inside Martinsville Football here in the MHS Three One Studio on the campus of Martinsville High School. I would, I would like to thank Coach Duggar for coming out and answering some of those questions. That's going to do it. I'm your host, Maddox Dilly.